One of the most important things in gymnastics is keeping your balance, especially on a balance beam. One of the worst things to do is wobble and fall off of the beam at a competition, so it is important that a gymnast remains over the center of the beam during her whole routine. The best place for a gymnast's center of mass to be is directly over her hands or feet, and if she leans to the side, her center of mass is no longer over the center of the beam. Oftentimes in gymnastics, when a gymnast is learning a new skill such as a back walkover on the beam, the coach will tell them, kick straight over your head or you'll fall off. This is completely true, and if the gymnast kicks her legs to the side instead of straight, she is almost guaranteed to fall off and it will be a lot harder for the gymnast to land successfully on the beam, as her center of mass will be over the side of it. Even if she somehow managed to get her feet on the 4 inch wide piece of wood, she would wobble a lot until she was able to regain her balance and get her center of mass back over the beam. In gymnastics, center of mass also plays an important role in the way you complete many other skills, not just on the beam. For a split leap, you want to pull your arms up and out to your sides in order to gain the most height and air time. In your arms, the center of mass is typically around the elbow. By raising your arms out to the sides, you raise the elbows just under a foot, so you also raise your overall center of mass. When you raise your center of mass, you allow yourself to jump a lot higher off of the ground. If a gymnast leaves her arms hanging, she will not be able to gain as much height because her center of mass will be lower. For a gymnast, raising your arms allows more time to complete a skill and more time to split your legs in the air for a leap. Another physics concept that is frequently seen in gymnastics is the conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is the product of moment of inertia, I, and rotational velocity, omega. So when the moment of inertia goes up, something else in the equation must go down. Because angular momentum is conserved, the rotational velocity is what has to change. When the moment of inertia gets larger, the rotational velocity must get smaller in order to maintain the same angular momentum. Likewise, when the moment of inertia decreases, the rotational velocity must increase. A larger moment of inertia requires more torque to increase or stop the rotation, and a torque has to be applied for the gymnast to rotate in the air. In gymnastics, this concept can be seen by comparing a back tuck to a back layout. In a tuck, the gymnast pulls her legs in close to her body so that she decreases her radius. A decreased radius causes the moment of inertia to get smaller, which causes the gymnast to flip faster because the rotational velocity is larger. In a layout, a gymnast is in a more open position with a larger radius. This causes the moment of inertia to increase, which then results in a much smaller rotational velocity and longer time in the air. Because a gymnast has a larger moment of inertia in a layout than a tuck, she would require more torque to rotate at the same speed. In the layout, the gymnast doesn't rotate as fast as she does in a tuck because she has the same torque for both flips. This concept is similar to that of an ice skater pulling her arms in for fast turn or when a gymnast pulls her arms in for a twisting layout. The speed at which a gymnast can rotate is partially determined by how quickly she pulls her arms around and also how close to her body she pulls them in. By pulling her arms in closer to her body, the gymnast decreases the distance between her arms and her center of mass or her axis of rotation. Decreasing this radius allows for a smaller moment of inertia which means that the gymnast can twist much faster.